<laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, my name is Mark Miodovnik. I'm a material scientist uh, from King's College London. And I'm going to talk to you about stuff. Uh, you're made of stuff. I'm made of stuff. This floor is made of stuff. And it's wonderful stuff. But you think you know something about stuff, don't you? But I'm going to show you some strange stuff that perhaps you don't know so much about. Ah. Oh. The Royal Institution, such a civilised place. A cup of tea before I start my lecture. How wonderful. And I need some sugar. Let's get some sugar stuff. Here it is. <laughs> Put it in my tea. Now, look, even the cup is made of stuff. The spoon is made of stuff. Stir my cup. And the thing is about stuff is that sometimes it does things that you weren't really expecting. <laughs> a spoon that melts in your tea. Not so useful, maybe, but still incredible, don't you think? Now, while we're on incredible, I've got a liquid here that's incredible. And before I show it to you, I want to ask you all a favor. Could you all turn off your common sense for this lecture? I need you just to turn it off. I know your mums and dads want you to have it on for the rest of the time afterwards, but I'm going to show you some things that are so strange, so odd, that it's just going to be a hindrance if you'll keep saying, oh, but that doesn't make any sense. So turn off your common sense. Now, liquids and mobile phones, they don't really mix, do they? Anyone who's ever sat down at the loo with their phone in the back pocket and heard a splosh knows this. <laughs> OK, so you shouldn't be doing this, should you? Right? No problem at all if you've got a strange liquid called a fluorocarbon. This stuff doesn't hurt mobile phones at all. In fact, mobile phones love it. Still working? Fine as you like. Now, don't you think we should put this in all the loos? Don't you think? <laughs> That will save us all a lot of bother. So stuff really can just take you completely unawares. Here is a coffee cup set sent to me by my aunt. I was using it for ages until I thought, there's something very odd about this. I took it into the lab, and we did all sorts of tests on it. Nothing came up positive until we used the Geiger counter on it. Now, a Geiger counter detects radioactivity. Now, if I'm radioactive, this will click. Whew. It's a very strange present from your aunt, don't you think? I've been checking all her presents from then, from then on with the Geiger counter, I can tell you. So how do we understand these strange properties of matter? And can we, once we understand them, can we use them to make even more marvellous things? Well, in order to understand that, I need to take you on a journey which is going to involve understanding about size. And we, you know, what does that mean? Well, we're sort of used to the three dimensions of space, aren't we? Sort of x, y, z, left, right, down, back, up. And you sort of think, if I know where I am in those dimensions, surely I know everything. But it turns out not to be true. It turns out that even for a whale or an ant or a teacup, you need to know how big you are if you know how things are going to happen in the world. So let me take you on a journey. We're going to be dimension travelers in these lectures. And I'm going to take you to the really big, I'm going to take you to skyscrapers, and I'm going to show you that the forces that dominate up there are, is gravity. And that's going to really make a big difference to huge things. And then we're going to zoom in to small things, atoms, and we're going to see that different physics dominates down there. Quantum mechanics, very strange stuff goes on. And also, despite the fact that it's very small, there's a lot of space down there. How weird is that? And the key point is going to be that at different scales, different physics dominate. So even though I can stand on a tiny salt crystal, right, it isn't, it's not gravity that's keeping me stuck to it. It's the surface forces of this crystal plane. It's actually very sticky. Oh, in this lecture, what we're going to be doing is looking at animals, right, and how size affects animal behavior. In particular, why it's very useful to be small. So we're going to look at ants, and we're going to see how they're super strong. And to be honest, when you're shrunk down like this, super scary. And then we're going to look at the big things, elephants, right? Wonderful, huge creatures, amazing things. But it turns out they're not actually relatively very strong. And we're going to ask the question, can they really dance? OK, so that's going to be the journey we're going to take. Now, I've got a pet hamster called um, Hamish. Has anyone here got a pet at all? Have any of you got pets? You have? 
So let, let's shout out their names. What is, what is it? You got ca cats, dogs? What have you got? Dog. 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 Crocodile? <laughs> what those names. Right, excellent. OK, all right. Fantastic. Now, I took my pet hamster on holiday with me. I hope you all take your, your pets on holiday with you. Um, so we went to Dubai. And the reason we went to Dubai, it's very hot there, so I wanted to get a bit of sun, so did my hamster. And the reason we went there is because we wanted to see the tallest building in the world. This is the Burj Khalifa, and it is huge. It's half a mile high, and we went to the top of the Burj Khalifa, and this is what happens when you look down. It is very scary. Half a mile down, that's what it seems. And I had my hamster, and I said to my hamster, whoa, <laughs> that's a long way down. Tell you what, I'll race you to the bottom. You go this way. Right? And I'll take the lift. And the funny thing is that he kind of was up for that. He was up for jumping. Now, that isn't a very tenable position for a hamster, is it? Jumping off a building. Or is it? Maybe he knows something that I don't. Now, if I fell from this height, I'd certainly die. But could Hamish survive? Does size matter when it comes to falling off buildings? We really should meet Hamish, don't you think? and see what he's got to say. So come and meet Hamish, the hamster, and also his friend, the dog, Sweet. Oh, here's Hamish. Oh, hello, Hamish. Sweet. Hello, so what, what's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte, and you're? Alan. Alan, and, and you've got Sweet and Hamish. Oh, how is he doing? And how sweet. They're both happy, right, OK. Now, who, who thinks that, uh, let's say, Hamish could survive a, a tall, drop off a tall building? Quite a lot of you. And who thinks that they have no chance? Hamish has no chance of surviving. Who thinks that? A few of you? All right, a few of you. OK, so we're, we're, we're undecided in this audience, aren't we? OK, and what about, what about Sweep the Dog? Who thinks Sweep the Dog could survive a large fall off a building? Well, no one does. Oh, you do? Fantastic. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, love it. OK, great. OK, so, what, so how would we decide this? How can we decide if this is true or not? Well, let's do an experiment, right? Now, you'll have noticed we've got this large box here in this lecture here. Now, this isn't as tall as a tall building, but it's pretty high. So if we do an experiment dropping pets, we're going <laughs> to surely find out the answer to this, aren't we? Now, of course, we're not going to drop real pets. Did you, what, did you think? Oh, <laughs> come on. I really hope that no one at home either thinks about dropping pets. It's really cruel. We'd never do that. We'd never do that. We've got some crash test pets over here who are going to take the place of these pets. And we're going to do the experiment with these crash test pets. But later on, we're going to bring you two back on to review the results. Is that OK, Hamish? Yeah, you can watch over there. So you go back and take your seat, and you do sweet, and we'll see what happens. All right. So this is pretty exciting. This is Andy. Andy has rigged up this thing, and it's a box. And it's going to take these crash test pets to the top of this lecture theatre. Now, what are these crash test pets? They're balloons filled with jelly. So, which is <laughs> ballistic jelly, so it's kind of, it, 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 it replicates the, 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 um, the flesh of a, <laughs> well, I mean, a bit. All right. So this is crash test dog. <laughs> he's ready, isn't he? And this is crash test hamster. Yes. Oh, he's, he's moving all over the place. All right. They're a bit nervous. Fair enough. They're going to they're gonna have a bit of a jump. Now, they're intrepid pets. So let's put crash test hamster up and let's go for this. Now. All right, up he goes. Now, you'll notice that they're both the same shape, right? And they're both made of the same material. So this is a fair, this is a fair comparison. Now, sometimes they don't want to jump. They get nervous when they get, you know what it's like going to the top of the tall board. They don't want to jump. And so we've got this trap door. And I, and I press this button. And hey, and Crash Test Hamster has no choice but to drop. It's a bit of a James Bond trick, actually. OK, uh, Crash Test Hamster, let's do a countdown for him, shall we? OK, five, four, three. Two, one. Whoa! Let's hear it for a crash test hamster. Yes. OK, so crash test hamster has survived, as you, most of you thought. And now it is only, let's just have a look at him. How is he feeling? Yes, you're fine. Well done. Good one. He's oh, he's uh, yeah. Bring it on, he's saying. Taller, higher, bigger. OK, now, Crash Test Dog's looking a bit nervous now. He's got his turn next. Crash Test Dog, how are you feeling? Yes, all right. You're being a bit quiet. OK. All right, let's get Crash Test Dog in here. How's he feeling? All right, now. Crash Test Dog, up he goes. 
Um, I've got a little kind of communication link with Crash Test Dog. Yes, I know, I know. You'll get a bone. Yes, yes. OK, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! Um, I think we might need a ambulance. Um, oh. Uh, um, yeah, we might. I think, yeah, we, we're getting the ambulance. Yeah, OK, fine. The jelly ambulance is coming. All right. Um, all right, so crash test dog is not looking too well from that fall. So it turns out that, that essentially, as, as you guys thought, most of you, and it does actually matter how big you are, whether you survive a fall. So. What's changed? I mean, we've got the same material. One of them isn't stronger than the other one, right? It's just jelly, and they're both made of jelly. So what has changed? Well, one is bigger than the other. What does bigger mean? Well, let's, let's think about volume. There's a funny word, isn't it, volume? Because you kind of think of it as liquids and things that you drink, but it actually just means how much